Okay, so I am starting my first um, video here and this is kind of a good one to start with because it's a little bit of a longer term project um, that you can do at home with your child. This can be done with really any age group, but I think that um, younger kids will get maybe the biggest kick out of it and you can sort of start talking to them about um, how to do an experiment where you could come up with um, hypothesis, experimental group versus control groups, and, and so forth. And I thought of this, um, this is actually a really good one to do, and I thought of this because I was um, cutting up some fruit and I have a strawberry in the bunch that was doing this, right? We don't like when that happens. Got some, you know, mold going on here. Um, possibly there's, you know, obviously there's bacteria in there and different things. So for this experiment, what you're gonna wanna do, and you are gonna have to sacrifice some strawberries um, for the good of science here, but what you'll wanna do is um, buy a package of strawberries and um, you can keep some of them like right in the same container, but then what you'll wanna do is for, and, that, and that'll be obviously your control group. So then what you'll do is take um, a couple of other strawberries and put them in separate containers and those will be your experimental groups. So the thing is here that um, bacteria and mold spores and stuff live actually underneath the leaves of, of the fruit. So um, what you can do is formulate a hypothesis, like what do you think would happen if you were to leave the strawberries in, in the container without washing them? You could have a second group that you wash with only water. And then you can have a third group where you're going to wash them um, with vinegar. Any vinegar is fine um, because vinegar is acetic acid. And so um, you should always wash your fruits and vegetables with vinegar and, uh, and rinse them with water after to kill mold spores, bacteria, and that kind of thing. It does a really good job for that. Um, so you would have a group where you... Um, wash them with just water, a group you wash them with just vinegar, and then the best turnout is actually gonna be ones where you cut the leaves right off the top. You can even just pluck them out like this and wash them with vinegar. You could even do another group where you just take the leaves off and you don't rinse them with vinegar. So you could potentially have up to um, you know five or six experimental groups, and then you, you put them in the refrigerator for quite a while, let them kind of do their thing for maybe a week or so, and then um, check out your, your results at the end. So this is an opportunity for you to talk about, um, again, the experimental design process. Um, for, for this particular experiment, forming a hypothesis, having a control group, which is the berries with the leaves left on that you're not doing anything to, and then experimental groups, which could be any variety of things. If your kid wanted to try to wash them with soap and water instead of the vinegar solution, um, that's perfectly acceptable too. And then you wanna make observations at the end for each of your groups. Um, make comparisons and form a conclusion at the end. So this is basically um, it. You're wanting to make your hypothesis in the beginning, like a prediction of what um, your student thinks is going to happen. You wanna make sure you have a control group versus experimental groups. And those can be any number of, of different combinations of things that you can do to those strawberries. Um, after you let them do kind of do their thing for a week or however long, your child can make observations. You could even talk about possible sources of error, like perhaps each strawberry was not washed in the same way, or maybe there are different areas of the refrigerator that you had to place the containers in that could vary in temperature. Um, but either way, um, at the very end, you can have your child create a data table where they write in the different observations that they made. And then at the very end, you can have them sort of put together a conclusion paragraph where they summarize their findings.